everybody, it's Uptown, and today I'm gonna review another costume for you guys from Cosplay Wars. For those of you that don't know, I have reviewed from Cosplay Wars once in the past. I have a review video up on my channel, and it is the Spider-Man cosplay bodysuit. Today I'm gonna be reviewing a different bodysuit for you guys, but from the same company. Cosplay Wars is a website that specializes in bodysuit costumes for superheroes, from a lot of series that you probably know, like things from Marvel or DC, there's Metroid, stuff like that, they have it. Now Ron, the guy from Cosplay Wars that I have been in correspondence with, emailed me once again and asked me if I wanted to review another suit for you guys. The Spider-Man suit went so well that I said yes and I really wanted to review another suit, so I hopped on over to Cosplay Wars' website, which will be in the description box down below for those of you that are interested, and I browsed around to look for a suit to try, but here's the problem. I didn't really grow up with American comics or that sort of thing. I, it really wasn't a part of my childhood. I'm not incredibly attached to a lot of those characters. So the other suits that were on the site, I wasn't like inspired by to be like, I looked at them and I was like, that, I wanna cosplay that. So I was kind of stumped and I wasn't really sure what to do and I felt kind of bad or like I, like it would be lame if I just reviewed like another different Spider-Man suit, like that just didn't make sense because I want to show you guys variety and the different kinds of things you can get from sites like these. And that is when I had an idea. Now, see, in the navigation bar on Cosplay Wars' website, they have this handy dandy little section that takes you to a place called Custom Suits. So it got me thinking, and I thought, well, if there isn't a suit already on the site that I'm really wanting to review right now, what if? I could have Cosplay Wars make me a suit that I want to review. So I emailed Ron and I prayed to the cosplay gods that I was not asking too much and I said, hey, um, would it be too much to ask if you could maybe make a custom suit for me to review so that way I could tell people about this really cool service that you offer? And lo and behold, he actually said yes. So after a little bit of brainstorming and some discussions, I realized what suit I needed to ask for. So I sent him some pictures and the character and I said, hey, uh, is this doable? And he said yes. So, ladies and gents and everybody in between, I have for you a ladybug suit from Miraculous Ladybug. So when Ron said yes, I sent him an email with reference pictures of Ladybug of the front and the back so that he could see the exact placement of her spots and the overall kind of design of her suit. And I also sent him a bullet list of aesthetic preferences and directions, let's call them. I wasn't really sure what information was gonna be useful to him, so I figured more information was more useful than less. So I basically sent him, I basically sent him some paragraphs really of what was in my mind and what I really wanted for the suit. So I'm gonna tell those things to you now so that you can have those in mind because I'm gonna reference back to all of these points later when I actually show you the suit so we can talk about just how well he followed my directions. First of all, I told him that I wanted the hexagonal pattern that is featured on the suits from Miraculous Ladybug. I also wanted him to include the shading and highlights that kind of enhance body and muscle contours that you see on a lot of these bodysuits, but I told him that I wanted them subtle. I didn't want them to be really stark or in your face because I find that when it's too dramatic, my personal preference anyway, is that it looks too much like a printed bodysuit. And while that might seem counterintuitive because yes, obviously it's a printed bodysuit, I didn't want that to be like the thing that's on your mind. And in reference to the highlight points that he might decide to put on the suit, I asked if he would be so kind as to make that like hexagonal pattern mainly noticeable just in those areas. So that, you know, from a distance, you wouldn't like be looking at this bodysuit and be like, yeah, you've got honeycombs all over your body. Cause I didn't want that. So with all of that being said, I sent all that off to him. He said, can do, will do. Also, do you want soles 
included in this bodysuit. In my last review, my Spider-Man suit did not have soles already installed into the bodysuit, which was something that I wasn't aware that I could just ask for. And that was kind of my bad. Um, it is a thing you can ask for and have included normally when ordering bodysuits from Cosplay Wars. I just didn't realize it. And because I wasn't going through the website, I was going directly through them via email because the suit was sponsored to me. I didn't think to ask about it. So I was kind of like, oh, mm, darn, didn't come with souls. Bummer. He was really nice this time and actually made sure to ask me like, hey, this is an option. Do you want me to include souls this time? I said yes, because in the show, Ladybug's feet, they're flat. They're not, she's not wearing like wedge heels like Queen Bee does. She's not wearing like big chunky boots like Shanoir is. It's basically just her feet with like the bottoms of those like parkour shoes on the bottom. I don't remember what they're called. Maybe they're just called parkour shoes. I don't know, but that's what her feet look like. Um, and that was the look that I was going for. So I said, yeah, if you can include soles, that would be great because then I don't have to do it myself. I also sent in custom measurements the same time as last time and also the same as last time. He made the suit. He gave me an estimate of I think a few weeks because he was going to have to like actually design the suit from scratch then have it made and then have it shipped to me. So it was going to take a little bit longer than last time but within that time frame the suit arrived without any problems and spoiler, I definitely have already looked at this suit and it has already been tried on because I was excited and I was impatient to see it. But enough about me blathering on, it is time to actually look at the suit and show it to you guys so that you can see what I have already seen. So before I actually show you like the suit itself, um, I want to point out that I didn't ask for this. This was not necessary or like specified at all, but he chose to send me a little mask with the suit, which I find very cute and very funny. You could absolutely like use this mask if you wanted to with the suit. It's for sure gonna match because it's made of the exact same fabric on the outside as the bodysuit is. This mask will not be being used with this bodysuit. Um, plans are already have already been in motion to make a mask out of something else to go with the suit. But I find this that this is really cute and it was a really sweet kind of extra thought um, that I appreciate. So yeah, that's that was included and it was nice. So here we have the bodysuit. Here she is, she's majestic, she's beautiful. So I'm basically gonna talk about things that I can immediately notice by looking at the suit here. I am gonna show it to you being worn so that you can get the full effect, but right now I'm gonna talk about just kind of the basic points. First, what it's made out of. Same kind of uh, deal that I'm familiar with from Cosplay Wars. It's a very silky um, four-way stretch performance fabric. For those of you that don't know when I say four-way, um, I basically mean that if you take a piece of the fabric, it means that it can stretch both lengthwise and widthwise in both directions. So this bodysuit is very stretchy, which is wonderful. It really helps with the fit of making sure that it is tight and snug on your body. The construction of the suit is also very familiar to what my Spider-Man suit was in terms of just where all of the seams are. And because of that past experience, I know that these seams are probably going to help it just have a good fit, even if they are atypical to what I'm used to seeing on like a bodysuit's pattern that you would typically find. Looking at the suit up close, you can see that the hexagonal pattern is featured across the entire suit. It's not really lacking anywhere. It is across the whole thing and you can see it. However, I am pleased to report that it is not punching me in the face. I can see that it's there if I look up close, but like looking at it from a distance, it's not it's not going to be incredibly apparent that like, oh, you you have the hexagons all over your body. Good for you. And I don't know why I'm so like hung up on that. Holding the suit up, you can see that the muscle contours are there. You can see that it's been shaded around the bust area. It's been shaded around the crotch and on the inner thighs as well. If I flip the suit around on the back, it's a little 
I think it's a little hard to see in the camera, but there is shading as well on the back and you'll see later, but this shading is like incredible because it makes your back look ripped. There's no other way to describe it. It's just your back is swole. There is also shading on the back of the crotch, which is going to make the booty look good, I guess. As mentioned before, this bodysuit also has soles on it. As you can see, the bottom of the bodysuit has basically the bottom of a shoe on it. I was really surprised when this first realization kind of hit me, but it's not just the bottom of a shoe on this bodysuit. There is an entire shoe inside of the bodysuit. There's like a canvas shoe over this whole bodysuit. It has a top that goes over your toes. It has the bottom of it. They are super flexible. They're flat though. You're not gonna get arch support in something like this. So if you wanted something extra, you probably have to put in like your own insole. I don't think there's a whole lot on this suit in the way of highlights, which I was a little surprised by because I did talk about highlights in my notes, but I'm not mad at it because the contours are fairly soft, which is definitely what I wanted. And I think if there was too much highlight, it would again just have that very much like, oh, I'm a printed bodysuit kind of look, which is what I wanted to avoid. The back of the suit has a invisible red zipper down the center back, which goes all the way up to the back of the collar. You just, with all that out of the way, now I have to talk about a couple of things that I do notice that I don't necessarily like. First things first, which was the first thing that really stuck out to me, which is the collar. The fit of the collar, as you'll see later, is fine. However, what I'm not happy with is the shape and the height of it. Ladybug's collar is black. It has a sort of round shaped connection to the rest of the red bodysuit. And her collar comes up actually quite a ways. You can see a little bit of skin there, I think, but it really comes up pretty high. This suit does not do that. Um, you can tell right off of the bat just by looking at the slope of the suit of the shoulder up to the neck, like the collar is only really gonna come like maybe up to here. It's not that tall. And the front of it looks very kind of V-neck shaped, which is, which is me nitpicking. Like I'm nitpicking at this point because I'm just a perfectionist and I'm very particular about like my screen accurate details sometimes. It's what I've noticed. Um, but the main thing is really the height. The height is really what gets me because that's something that is going to be pretty apparent, I think, when the costume is worn. So that's something that I may have to look into altering myself in some way. The other thing that I noticed that is less than perfect is I think there was a problem with the printing where the suit has shading for like musculature and contours and things like that. I think there might have been a problem when the fabric itself was like getting printed and having all of this stuff like put on it so that it was part of this design because I'm gonna hold up the the inside leg seam of like your inner thigh where there's shading there. So I'm gonna hold this up and that's what you're looking at as I talk about this. So this is the crotch and this is the, the inside leg seam as it goes down. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? When this fabric was getting printed, it's almost like the edge of it didn't get any color or any pigment on it. And so right along this seam, there are gaps in the shading that are actually pretty apparent. And this is with the suit just kind of as is. Once this suit is put on and the fabric is stretched, unfortunately it doesn't do any favors for this problem and it actually becomes more apparent. What I'm holding up now is underneath the arm. This is the sleeve right here and this is kind of the underarm area and you can see that the exact same thing has happened. It's almost like this part here got folded over and got kind of like scrunched or something. However, this printing method was done. And again, like the shading 
couldn't actually reach all of the fabric. So you get kind of weird, funky spots like this that just don't really flow seamlessly with like the rest of the suit. Now, all things considered, I'm thankful that those kind of aesthetic issues are in places that are not very apparent. Like it's under the arm, it's on the inside of your leg. They're not places that are going to be always apparent in every single photo that you get taken at con. Like it's not the end of the world, but it is something I noticed and it is something that I'm a little concerned about and I will be trying to go back in and fix some of this myself. So those are the main things about the suit that I've noticed, both good and bad, just by looking at it as it comes out of the box. Next thing to do is to show you this suit when it's actually on a body so that you can get the full effect of what it looks like, see where the contours fall, see those little areas where the shading had some problems, see how it fits. So without further ado, I guess we get to call in our model because this suit is not actually for me. Keon, wanna come try on a suit? All right, let's put this baby on and we will be right back. Come here. <laughs> Whee! There you go. I think that was actually really fun. You should do that more often. Okay. So I am Ladybug. Hello. Hello. Minus this. Minus that. That's not here yet. That's not done. This is the bodysuit on me and it's pretty great. Yeah, so this is what it looks like when it's actually on the bod that it was actually made to be on. Because this was not made for me. This was made for, for someone Cloud. smaller than you. <laughs> yes, for someone smaller than me. So in general, this is what the suit looks like from the front. Like I was saying before, like the contours and stuff, they end up in the right place. It looks good. So there's shading here, like that, and shading under the bust. On the sides. On the sides. Which help with a thinner effect. The inner legs, which we'll talk more about because there's some issues there that we'll point out, but. Cool sewing. Has the cute little gloves with the nice separate thumb like I was talking about. It's good. How do the fingers fit? The fingers fit really well. Okay. Um, I don't know, like if you have like longer fingers, maybe like give a little measurement because I have really small hands and these fit perfectly. Yeah. But I don't think we gave any measurements for that. No, we so. didn't give any measurements when we were giving custom stuff uh, for like But it's also stretchy material. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's something to note. Um, one thing I want to make sure to point out, which I'd really appreciate is that the, the polka dots are not distorted when it's actually on the body. For the most part, like here in the front and everything, even with the suit stretched out like over a body, they're still round and they didn't become like oblong or like stretched in any like really weird ways, which is great. I really appreciate that. Which also just comes with fitting it correctly and yeah. not having it stretch too much. Mm -hmm. Cause I will say, you know, it's t a little tighter here and this one is a little oval. That's but fair. it's not that much and you don't really notice it. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but for the most part, they look really good. Yeah. Like I was talking about, the collar is short. It is shorter than we would like and it's shorter than what Ladybug's collar really is in the show. So we'll be going back in and trying to fix Attach. it and make some alterations ourselves. The zipper keeps it really fitted nicely in the back. I look swole, do you see this? Maybe. Yeah, um, the contours in the back, I don't know if you can tell on this camera, I don't know. I keep washing out everything because I'm so white. Um, but they look really nice. <laughs> it's really well done. Um, it has contours for the booty. They the give booty. you a nice boot. They give you a nice boot. <laughs> you don't gotta work out, you just gotta shade correctly. <laughs> it looks good. Spots oh, they also are... give me belly button shading. He did. And it's I like forgot. perfectly placed. It is actually perfect. Now I know exactly where to poke. Talk about your experience with the shoes and putting those on. So these are the shoes. Um, one thing that I really like, didn't actually like about um, some cosplays is I have a thing with feet. I don't really like feet. So I don't like it when like toes, you can see the toes through the fabric, but this actually has, okay, we're gonna change position again. If you can kind of see, it has like a little outline right here. 
where it actually has like canvas attached to the shoe and it's literally a shoe yeah. inside here so it covers the toes and it has a nice heel to keep it on um which is really great and really sturdy so it's sturdy for walking mm -hmm. it's not gonna fall apart as easily i'm assuming um i don't have much experience with body suits um it stays on it doesn't show your toes um but they are difficult to get on <laughs> they are a bit of a struggle um i remember the first time that keon tried this on when this first showed up in the mail it was like a half hour process to even get their feet fully into both shoes. Yeah. But today, with my second and third time putting this on, um, it's gotten a lot easier and I'm able to get it on in like 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. Yeah, so it gets easier with practice. So other things to note, um, the problem issues that I talked about earlier in the video about the shading having some printing problems. So now that it's on the body, you can see really well on this side seam where there sh should be shading kind of meeting at the seam. There's this whole like shape here where it didn't penetrate the fabric whatsoever. Let's see if I can show you guys. Yeah, right there. There's Perfect. the leggy. So this is the inside of the leg, which we noticed right away um, when the suit was put on for the first time. But yeah, there's this whole like stripe along the seam that's just bright red because there's no shading there. Um, and it is pretty apparent and I know that it would probably show up in photos, which is why we're concerned about it. So what we're planning on doing is going in with basically some diluted and watered down um, fabric paint or fabric dye. Um, to slowly go in on these spaces that haven't had shading penetrate the fabric and see if we can get it to blend a bit better. Um, we don't know yet if it's gonna work, but it's what we're planning on trying. That's the hope. Um, we hope that it will have the desired result. It came with this, which is really nice. So if you don't wanna buy one, you didn't have to. Yeah. But because it came with this, we're gonna try painting this to see how the fabric takes to the dye. Yeah, we'll first. use this just to kind of swatch uh, the paint to see how the fabric kind of works with it. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed that that works out. That's the plan. Um, for the collar, what we're planning on doing is just basically patterning, I think, a separate collar out of black fabric and stitching it over the existing collar on top of the suit because there's not like a seam. The seam where the collar is attached is not actually where that black is. It's just printed on and made to match up. So I can't just take the suit apart and just put on a new collar. So we'll be putting one on top. I think besides the shading issue and the collar being a bit short, everything else is honestly like perfect. Yeah, I would be wary. Um, the suit does not hide things. Oh yeah, that's true. The fabric, I talked about the fabric in the beginning, but one thing to note is that like, I don't know what it is, but the thickness of the fabric or the texture of it, you can see lines of any undergarments you put on under this thing extremely easily. It's very hard to hide. Um, so you may have to experiment with some things um, of getting like some very specific shapewear that maybe doesn't have a lot of seams and lines that are going to show through, things like that. It's something you're gonna have to work with. It was very well done. So thank you for modeling. Thank you, no problem. You did so well. It's almost like it was made to fit you like a glove. No, it's just my model body. Everything <laughs> fits it. And I always look perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm leaving. Just Bye. Just shrivels <laughs> up. <and> the... <laughs> thank you, Keon. One other thing that I have to talk about, because I emailed Ron and I asked him, what would this suit have cost? if I, if he was not just sponsoring it to me, because that's information that I didn't have before and he did write me back. So I'm going to tell you what he said. So what Ron from Cosplay Wars has said is that um, if he doesn't have the design already, um, then it depends on the complexity of the design, the time frame that you give him, like if you have a deadline or whether you want an exclusive design or if it can be available for other people, which is an interesting specification. So if you want like a suit that's like, I want this suit for me that nobody else is gonna have, then that would probably raise the price. But if you're being like, I want this suit that you don't have yet, 
but then you can also like add it to your store if you want to afterwards if it like goes well that's another thing the range he gave is extremely large which is unfortunate but he basically said um it can range from forty dollars to four hundred dollars so i don't really know what that means well, hello, it's Editing Uptown, and I've returned, this time to give you some better information and better explain to you how this whole custom suit ordering business with Cosplay Wars actually works. To put it simply, when you custom order a suit from Cosplay Wars, you have two options. Your first option is to order custom sizing, which basically means that you're ordering a suit design that either already exists on Cosplay Wars' website, or you're ordering a suit design that an actual suit pattern designer already has made somewhere else that Cosplay Wars can then use that design but make it to your specific measurements. There are a lot of people out there on the internet and in the cosplay community that make suit pattern designs as their career, whether it's people with their own private businesses or people who sell custom patterns that they themselves have made on things like Etsy, etc. Those people have those patterns that they've designed that they offer to sell. And if you buy those patterns, you're not buying an actual suit that you can put on and wear. You're just buying the pattern. Companies like Cosplay Wars can also buy those patterns from the people that make them and then use those same patterns to actually make the suits in their own facilities. That being said, if you order a custom suit from Cosplay Wars asking for a design that they don't already have in their store, what Cosplay Wars will likely do is go to any of those suit pattern designers, buy the pattern for the suit design that you're asking for if it exists, and then make the suit themselves and send it to you with your custom measurements. There's nothing wrong with doing this, and a lot of people may choose to do that, but what if you don't actually want a suit design that anybody else has patterned? Maybe you've already looked around on the internet and looked at all the patterns that people have already made, and they're just not quite what you're looking for. If that's the case, then you have your second option when ordering a custom suit from Cosplay Wars, which is to actually get a custom design and not custom sizing. If you order a custom design, what you're doing is asking Cosplay Wars to make from scratch a brand new suit design pattern that they will also then make in-house and send to you. And this is a pattern that nobody else has made. When ordering a custom suit through Cosplay Wars, you need to specify which of these two options you're actually asking for. The reason I know to do this is because I actually recommended a couple of friends order custom suits from Cosplay Wars to match the ladybug suit that I got from them because I wanted to do a Miraculous Heroes group at SoccerCon. Even though in their emails and messages to Cosplay Wars, they specified specific design details that they wanted and said that they were in a group with me and wanted their suits to match aesthetically with the ladybug suit that I had made, Cosplay Wars didn't quite understand that they were asking for custom designs and not just custom sizing. As a result, when they got their suits in the mail, it wasn't what they wanted because what Cosplay Wars had ended up doing, thinking that they just wanted custom sizing and not a design, was that they'd gone and gotten patterns that my friends had already looked at and decided that they didn't like, but Cosplay Wars had used those patterns to make suits to their sizes and sent them. So my friends had to contact Cosplay Wars and let him know that this wasn't actually what they asked for. And as a result, they did get refunded. So in general, all I'm saying is that while Cosplay Wars' quality seems quite good and their customer service, you know, seems perfectly nice, if you decide to make a custom suit with them, you need to be really specific in what you're asking for because there is a possibility for miscommunication. Also along those lines, that starts to shed some light on the huge price range that Ron from Cosplay Wars quoted me in his email that before didn't make sense, but now makes a lot more sense. If you order custom sizing, all he has to do is use a pattern that already exists and make it fit you. That's not as big of a deal as asking him to make a custom design from scratch just for you. So if you decide to order a custom suit from Cosplay Wars, just be forewarned, if you're asking for custom sizing, 
the prices are perfectly reasonable. But if you're asking for a design all your own, that's going to cost more. I think that's all I have to say. I am so sorry this video is so long-winded. I just want to make sure that you guys have as much information as possible and know the full scoop before you make any informed decisions as a consumer. So, carry on. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found it informative in some way, shape, or form, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Oh my god, you're so cool! Good job! Wow, woo! That was great! I love you! Hey everybody, it's me. I'm back. I have an update for you. So since filming the review for the Ladybug suit, I have gone in and I have done some tinkering. So like I talked about, um, there were a couple issues on the suit with shading. What I talked about doing was going in with maybe some watered down fabric paint and seeing if I could minimize the visibility of those issues myself. I talked to a friend of mine and she had a really excellent suggestion for me, which I decided to give a try. She suggested this for me, which is jacquard textile color. What she said was nice about this stuff is that Unlike a simple fabric paint, which basically sits on the surface of whatever fabric you're trying to paint, this stuff acts more like a dye and actually penetrates the fabric and becomes kind of more a part of it, which is ideal for stretch fabrics. Because you can imagine if you just have a paint sitting on top of a stretch fabric, once it stretches, your paint is probably going to crack, it's going to split apart, and that's not cute. So I thought, wow, this is, sounds great. It's too good to be true almost. But I decided to try it. Um, so I got a multi-pack of this stuff off of Amazon for a pretty decent price. Came with like eight different colors that I could mix together and try to come up with a shade that matched the contours on this suit already. If you read the directions on the bottle, they do say that you can mix this with water and dilute it down for a semi-transparent color which is exactly what I wanted. Um, I was hoping that the hexagonal design on the suit would still show through the color that I put down on the fabric. So after a lot of messing around with the different colors, um, like I said in the review before, I used the mask that Ron sent with the suit to kind of swatch different colors and test it on the fabric to see how what color I was coming out with. And no matter what colors I mix together to try to match like the purpley hue of this suit, as soon as it came in contact with the fabric itself, it just turned brown, which was kind of weird. So that got me worried. But what ended up working the best for me, at least for this particular suit, was just taking black and watering it down, which may seem really obvious to some people. And it probably was, but I don't know. It works. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I did water this down quite a bit. Um, what I ended up doing, I think, was a roughly a one-to-one -one ratio. So whatever amount of textile color I would put in a little glass dish, I put roughly the same amount of tap water in. I used a small square tip flat paintbrush that I had lying around to mix up the color and apply it to the suit. I am absolutely thrilled with the results of this stuff. Now I will say it is tedious. It is very tedious and takes a lot of time. I was hunched on a stool doing this for many hours because you have to go slow and you have to kind of go in layers so that you don't put down something too dark and then get stuck with it. Because once it's on there, you can't really do a whole lot about it. So you, you can't rush it. But this is underneath the arm of the suit. And as you can see, there is no longer any like bright red unshaded areas here. It's blended out a little bit more now that there's textile color here. If you turn the suit inside out, you can see these kind of like washed out black areas, which is where I actually put color down. But yeah, it actually worked pretty well. And I was able to minimize kind of how apparent these printing issues were so that now I think whenever photos are taken, you really won't be able to see 
or tell, even in person, um, you can't really tell that there was ever a problem unless you're like right here scrutinizing it. So I did this um, underneath both the underarms on either side of the chest and also on the inner thigh seams on the inside of the legs. Those were the areas that really needed it most. Um, and it looks pretty good and I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, I have yet to see this on Kion, but I've stretched the fabric, I've kind of looked at it and honestly, it looks pretty good. Now the only thing that I'm gonna wanna do to this is to pattern out a new collar once I find some black stretch fabric that I think looks good with what this suit is made out of. I'll pattern out a new collar with the sort of rounded edge and basically fold it over so it has an outside and an inside and top stitch it on because I'm not gonna take this collar apart and try to put something on and attach it to it because that's just not really gonna work. That's that, and hopefully this is helpful to you. So, bye!